a philandering teen must change his ways and collect enough money to elope with his girlfriend. In 1962, Jimmy Reardon performs his original poem at the No Exit Cafe two weeks after his high school graduation. There he meets a lady whom he ends up sleeping with after two days. Six weeks later, she calls Jimmy to inform him that she's pregnant and that she'll need money to get rid of the baby. So the unsuspecting teen sends her $110 from the money he saved for college and only later realizes that she played the same con on other men. Desperate for money, the teen visits his wealthy friend Fred to see if he can borrow some cash. He explains that his father found out about what happened and won't give him his college tuition unless he comes up with his half of the money. However, the friend refuses and then enumerates multiple instances in which Jimmy failed to pay him back. So the teen comes up with a plan to find his inexperienced friend a person to sleep with in exchange for $110. Later, the pair drive through the city, and Jimmy tells Fred to stop by a diner he knows college students frequent. In Inside, they spot a woman reading a book, and the teen starts a conversation. Fred pressures Jimmy to hurry up and close his end of the deal, so he talks up his friend, hoping the woman finds Fred interesting enough to sleep with him. To move things along, the teen asks if she wants to join them on their way to the No Exit Cafe, and she accepts. Jimmy tells his friend to pay the woman's bill and meet them in his car immediately. In the vehicle, the teen tries to control his urges since the plan was for Fred to sleep with a woman. However, when she leans in for a kiss, he kisses his back. Minutes later, Fred opens the car door and sees the pair making out in the front seat. Jimmy chases after his furious friend and promises that she's interested in him. However, when they return to the vehicle, they discover she'd already left. Irate, Fred gets in the car and leaves his friend on the street. Later, Jimmy ponders about his rich friends leaving for their Ivy League colleges soon, reminding him of his middle-class existence. Then the Chicago L train passes, and he angrily hurls his beer in its direction because he considers the vehicle the symbol of his impending mindless future as a working drone. The following day, Jimmy's mother Faye enters his bedroom and says she thinks the reason his father withheld his tuition wasn't just because of how he lost the money, but because he took offense to the son choosing a different school from his alma mater, McKinley College. The teen says he doesn't want to attend the business school because it's an all-boys institution. The mother argues that it shouldn't matter because he either follows his father's wishes or find a job to pay for his share of the expenses. Faye plans on speaking to her husband husband at lunchtime and wants the son to be there. Later, Jimmy sits in the back seat with Susie while Fred drives the car next to his girlfriend, Denise. Susie asks the friends if they found the woman they searched for last night, prompting the panicked driver to ask what she's talking about. To absolve Fred of the conquest last night, Jimmy says not to worry about it because she doesn't know anything. At his destination, the teen searches the expansive property for his girlfriend, Lisa. Eventually, he finds her on the neighboring tennis court with Matthew. Then, the couple hides behind a tree and they share a kiss. Later, Jimmy remembers how Lisa thought it was cute when he took her to the No Exit Cafe instead of a fancy restaurant in town. He doesn't understand how she couldn't see that just because he looks like everyone else in her rich circle of friends, he didn't take her to an upscale establishment because he couldn't afford to. Suddenly, Lisa returns, and when she notices the sad look on his face, she asks what's wrong. The teen asks his girlfriend why it seems like she doesn't want to be seen with him, so she explains that her mother only allows her to see him if she agrees to date other people. Eventually, Jimmy asks if she wants them to argue over the same thing for the rest of their lives, and she says no. Then, the couple kiss, and they lie on the ground. When Lisa realizes what he wants to happen next, she tells him to stop. While laying her head on his stomach, she expresses her apprehensions about them making love, even though she admits she's curious. When he tries to kiss her again, she pushes him off and walks away. Meanwhile, by the pool, Denise asks the flustered Fred to rub oil on her legs, prompting Susie to remark that he fears women. The girlfriend says he's just timid and adds that she likes that about him. She quips that she only likes that he's timid because it gives her time to rest, causing Denise to defensively ask what she meant by the statement. Concurrently, Jimmy tells Lisa that after she leaves for Hawaii tomorrow, the next time they'll see each other is Christmas vacation. She laments that he'll have moved on to the many women at his new school by then. He finally admits that he won't attend his chosen college because his father wants him to enroll in his alma mater. When Lisa mentions she dreams of him surprising her with a visit while she's studying in Hawaii, he asks how much her plane ticket costs. She says it was $190, prompting Jimmy to exclaim that, with the money he has left, he'll only need $88 more for a ticket. The girlfriend asks what he plans to do when he gets there, and he says he can get a job while going to school and live with her. Lisa doesn't think it's a feasible plan, but he's determined 
to prove her wrong. So Jimmy heads to the bowling alley to speak to his sister Rosie. He explains his predicament, and she eventually agrees to give him $28. When the teen returns home, he overhears his father Al telling his mother that he disapproves of her inviting Joyce Fickett to the house that afternoon. The wife says that she likes having her intelligent and successful friend over. However, the man doesn't like the liberal woman hanging around the house. So Faye reminds him that she saw how he looked at Joyce during the real estate career dance. But Al says everyone was looking at the woman because of her revealing outfit. In the kitchen, Faye tells her son that she already told Al about the teen possibly going to McKinley. And then she tells him to talk to his father. In the dining room, the father shows his son a newspaper clipping about a successful McKinley alumnus. Then the teen makes up a story about a friend who chose to work and study in Hawaii. But Al says the islands are for beach bums. So Jimmy says he worries about the expensive tuition at McKinley and thinks he might go to Hawaii himself. That way, he can work to pay for his education, relieving his family of the burden. Al tells the teen that all he needs to worry about are his studies and he'll take care of the finances. When Jimmy continues talking about Hawaii, the father slams his fist on the table and emphasizes that he can either go to McKinley or find a job to pay for his share of the family's expenses. Before he leaves, Al warns Faye that there'll be hell to pay if he finds Joyce in their house when he gets home from work. Despite his father's disapproval of the plan, Jimmy heads to his photographer's assistant job, hoping his boss gives him an advance. In the studio, the teen tries to appear busy, so Linus, his employer, sees how hard he's working. Unfortunately, the photographer is in a bad mood because his mother, Mrs. Spaulding, dropped by to interrogate him about the woman he's dating, making it difficult for Jimmy to ask for an advance. Later, a masked man approaches Denise while she's all alone in the house. However, the intruder removes the disguise, revealing Jimmy who's role-playing a robber. The teen says he can't go through with a bit, but she says it was his best one yet, implying that they've been sleeping with each other behind Fred's back. Eventually, they make love, but she cuts it short when she notices that he seems distracted. So the teen explains that he's flying to Hawaii tomorrow and asks her if he can borrow money. Denise refuses because she promised Fred she wouldn't lend Jimmy any cash. He asks how her boyfriend would know if she did, and she says she doesn't keep secrets from Fred. So Jimmy reminds her that she had no problem keeping their affair a secret from his friend, and she reasons that it's something Fred won't understand. Later, he heads to Mrs. Spaulding's home to offer her information regarding her son's romantic life in exchange for money. Jimmy tells vague made-up stories about his boss's personal life, which satisfies the curious woman who agrees to pay the teen. Mrs. Spaulding doesn't have any money on hand and can only offer him a check. Unfortunately, he doesn't have time to go to the bank to cash the check, but he accepts it anyway. She asks Jimmy how old he is, and when she learns that he's a recent high school graduate, the sympathetic woman collects hidden dollar bills all over the house and gives them to him. With only $12 left before he reaches his goal, the teen returns home to pack his suitcase and type a goodbye letter to his parents. Suddenly, Faye enters the room to ask him to say hi to her friend Joyce who's come to visit. Moments later, Jimmy heads to the living room, hoping to ask his mother for the $12 he needs. There, Faye introduces her friend Joyce who taps the space on the couch next to her for him to sit on. The mother mentions how Jimmy writes poetry and encourages him to recite one of his poems for the guest. Suddenly, Al arrives from work, and he and the guest exchange tense greetings. Then, the man heads to the kitchen and calls his wife's name to join him. While Jimmy and Joyce talk on the couch, they overhear Al admonishing Faye for inviting the woman, even though he explicitly told her not to. Eventually, the guest excuses herself to leave, reasoning that she's expecting guests for dinner. So Faye tells the teen to drive the woman home. But when he complains that he'll be late for the dance, she hands him $20 for the trouble. Outside Joyce's house, the woman flirtatiously says she'd offer him a drink inside but doesn't want to keep him from his prior engagements, and he agrees. However, just before she enters the house, Jimmy changes his mind and says he'll come in for one drink. Meanwhile, Faye informs her husband that their son took the car because she told him to drive Joyce home. Concurrently, the teen compliments the woman's home, and she thanks him but clarifies that the interior design isn't to her liking because it was her ex-husband's choice. When she makes an offhand remark about her age, he tells her that she isn't old, but she counters that she is older than him. Then, Joyce says she doesn't want to keep him from his date and lights the fireplace. Even though he's aware that Lisa's waiting for him to pick her up and that Joyce is her mother's friend, Jimmy makes up an excuse to stay in the woman's house. The pair's conversation continues into the evening, and Joyce grows impatient with the teen's poems and his obliviousness to her blatant flirting. She stands up and asks if he isn't worried about being late to the dance, so he asks if he can use her phone. 
Jimmy calls Lisa, who's upset because she's been waiting an hour for him to pick her up. He says he gave his mother's friend a ride home, but that he'll pick her up after he returns the car to the house. Before ending the call, he asks his girlfriend if she loves him, but instead of answering, she hangs up. After the call, the teen finds Joyce in the library and asks her to dance. When he begins kissing her, the woman pushes him away, so he excuses himself to leave. However, Joyce calls him back, and they make love on the floor. After the deed, the woman joins the teen in the shower to wash up together. Later, while they kiss on the bed, the phone rings and she answers the call from Faye asking about her son. While the teen hurriedly puts on his clothes, Joyce assures the mother that Jimmy's on his way home. Before he leaves, he says, It was nice to meet you, Mrs. Fickett. She replies, It was nice to meet you, Mr. Reardon. When he arrives at Lisa's house, her angry mother informs him that her daughter went with someone else because he didn't pick her up at 8 p.m. So the teen heads to the dance, where he admonishes his girlfriend because she didn't wait for him. Lisa thinks he's intoxicated, but Jimmy denies the accusation. Suddenly, Matthew joins them and asks Lisa if she is alright. To avoid trouble, she says she is okay and tells them to return to their table. After Matthew leaves, Lisa expresses how much she loathes her boyfriend's selfish behavior and storms off. Jimmy follows her into the restroom, but she quickly leaves. On the way out, the quarreling couple pass Susie. Outside, he grabs his girlfriend and pins her to the ground. He asks that she stop struggling and listen to his explanation for his lateness. He lies and says he ran out of gas, and when he arrived at her house to pick her up, her mother told him that she went to the dance with someone else. Lisa says she wouldn't have gone with Matthew had he shown up on time, and Jamie blames her for failing to wait a few minutes. She corrects him, says she waited two hours, and adds that the night isn't going as planned. She says she hoped they'd finally make love, but with everything that's happened, she thinks it won't feel special. Jimmy says they can still salvage the night and promises she won't regret making love. She wants them to do it now, so the teen says they can do it after the dance, but she clarifies that she wants them to do the deed right this second. However, the teen makes several excuses as to why they can't make love, so the annoyed girlfriend pushes him off and rises to her feet. She says she knows he doesn't want to sleep with her because he's just been with another woman. Jimmy tries to come up with more excuses, but Lisa refuses uses to listen. She says she's never kissed Matthew before, but she's heavily considering sleeping with him. After Lisa walks away, two staff members grab Jimmy and throw him out of the party for entering the ladies' restroom earlier. Fortunately, Susie spots the altercation from the balcony and pretends she's his girlfriend, prompting the staff members to let the teen go. The friends head to a restaurant, where she lists the four remaining chaste female students in their class. When Lisa isn't one of the four she enumerates, he worries that his girlfriend lied to him about her in experience. On the drive back to the party, Jimmy confidently says that Lisa's chaste and that a star athlete like Matthew isn't her type. However, when Susie mentions that Matthew also writes poetry and short stories, he steps on the gas to reach the destination quicker. At the party, he sees the star athlete reciting a poem on stage. To win Lisa back, Jimmy grabs the microphone and performs a crude impromptu poem that embarrasses his girlfriend. Lisa leaves the party in Matthew's car, and the teen follows behind. He recklessly drives beside the pair's vehicle and demands they pull over. The date stops the car, challenges the teen to a fight, and handily beats him despite Lisa's pleas to stop. The pair drives off, leaving the beaten Jimmy in the street. Later, as the teen drives down the highway, he sees the L train on the tracks above him. Determined to beat his nemesis, he races down the road. Because he keeps his eye on the train above, he fails to see the vehicle before him, and he swerves at the last second, crashing into a metal post. With no one to turn to, he calls Joe and says he's Mr. Reardon, in reference to how they addressed each other when they said their goodbyes earlier. However, the woman assumes she's speaking to Al, and the teen wonders why she'd think his father would call her in the middle of the night. Eventually, Jimmy realizes his father's been sleeping with a woman. Shocked, the teen can't believe that his conservative father, who constantly preaches the importance of family values, is a hypocrite. As he recounts his struggles with monogamy, he wonders if it's hereditary. Then he calls home, and Al angrily answers the phone demanding to know where he is. So Jimmy calmly mentions Joyce's name over the phone, and the father realizes he knows about the affair. Eventually, Al arrives at the scene
machine and waits for the tow truck to take his car. Then they wait for the L train on the platform, and Jimmy thinks about what might have compelled his father to have an affair. He wonders if the man felt neglected at home and if maybe his shortcomings as a son drove his father to the arms of another woman. Seconds later, Al says if Jimmy wants to go to Hawaii, he's okay with it, but the son says he isn't going. Inside the train, the teen ponders about how his eventful night and learning of the affair allowed him to view his father as a flawed human, just like him. So he says that he's decided to honor the family tradition of attending McKinley College, eliciting a proud smile from 